Okay, YouTube, so we've got a video here, Road Trek Solar Upgrade. Will Prouse's recommendations, they might surprise you. Solar upgrades, what do they involve? Well, there's a solar panel, charge controller, and a battery. That kind of does it as far as solar. So what do I need? Well, I need more battery power. I need more capacity. I'm at a minimum amount of capacity right now. It's sustainable, but there's no headroom. So I want to expand that. The question arises, lithium or lead acid? Which one do I pick? I don't have a lot of knowledge or experience. I went to somebody with both knowledge and experience, Will Prouse. He has a YouTube channel and he also has a website, both of which I found real helpful and informative in coming to my decisions. And you might be surprised what I found. I don't know about you, but when I hear all the buzz about lithium iron phosphate batteries, my ears perk up. I get kind of interested and excited. Wow, what's this? Something new. I hear more, better, lighter, longer lasting, leaps tall buildings in a single bound. Makes me think of super battery. And that's okay. But before I take a ride up to Reno and plunk down my thousand hard-earned dollars for, say, a battle-born battery, I have to ask myself a question. What are my options? Well, according to Will Prouse, I actually have options. Uh, lithium is one of them. He also recommends a 100 amp AGM battery if a person has budgetary constraints. Yes, uh, I have budgetary constraints. Will has some qualifiers other than budget though. If I'm not using things that require a deep depth of discharge, try saying that fast three times, then a lead acid battery is fine. In fact, he says he used a much smaller than 100 amp battery in a minivan for several months while he was out traveling on the road. I suspect it's probably the same one that he's using in a lot of his video demonstrations now. It didn't wear out in six months, that's for sure. So what about other components? For example, the charge controller. I have a Renogy 30 amp Wanderer charge controller. So does it just become chopped liver when I upgrade the system? According to Will, not at all. In fact, in a comparison video on his YouTube channel, he got very good results when using it just the way I plan to use the one I have. So I think the charge controller is A-OK. -okay. So two components down, one component to go, the solar panel. A lot of people, including Will, have some objections to this type of a panel. But for me, the way I use it, it's the one thing that I'm really completely satisfied with and am convinced I made the right decision when I got it. I don't think I use this panel the same way other people use it. In fact, I, I wouldn't even call it a conventional way of using a flexible solar panel. It's not permanently mounted, so I don't have the problem of it overheating or getting beaten by the weather because I bring it in in inclement bad weather. It's sitting inside in the back of the van. The pros that he cites, the reasons to use one or the benefits of them, are exactly why I have it and why I use it the way I do. Flexible panels in the same wattage are more expensive almost always than the rigid glass aluminum structure panels. 
so for me, it's the space limitations that overrule the budgetary limitations in this case. I can carry two 100-watt solar panels of the flexible variety in the same space I could carry one fixed rigid panel. Will also made some other recommendations like a battery monitor, better fuse holders, battery temperature sensor for the charge controller, just to name a few. So all things considered, I feel validated about the things I bought in the past. They've worked out, they've done a good job, and I can continue to use them as I upgrade the system. I'm not going to have to toss out things, they're still usable. Which brings me to something I do know something about, consumer psychology. When something new comes out, it's natural for people to want it, especially if it's touted as being way better. You may not be aware of it, but the lead-acid battery was invented in 1859. That makes it 160-year-old technology. People still use it. Why? Well, on a cost-per-watt basis, it's economical. Lithium battery technology is poised to change that. Lots of technologies have come and gone. They've seen their day and been replaced by something else. Case in point, the landline telephone being replaced by the cell phone. The cell phone being replaced by the smartphone. Turtle that I am, it takes me a little bit longer to adapt to new technology. It's people like Will Prouse that make me feel comfortable and confident about the decisions I make. That I don't necessarily have to buy into the latest, greatest technology to enjoy benefits from the expansion that I am planning to do. I can use a grade or a step or two down from that and still enjoy a lot of benefits uh, without that upfront saving over time cost. Remember back at the beginning, my goal was to take a limited capacity of battery storage and expand on that. And it's, uh, I think I've made good choices. When people like Will Prouse validate those choices through his recommendations, Hey, it makes me feel good. So as always, if this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it would help somebody else, please share it with them. If you'd like to get notified of new content, then subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of the new content. And as always, comment as you see fit. Thanks for watching. Till the next video. See you later.